Hello, folks. Welcome to the Greater uh, uh, Denver College Fairs. This is the virtual college fairs session. And um, uh, in front of us, um, we do have uh, the American University of Paris EHL, Goldsmith University of London, the University of East, and I'm going to butcher this, um, and Angela, and Angela, uh, the University of East London and the uh, London Metropolitan. So let me uh, remind you, uh, the audience, of a few housekeeping items. Um, you can ask questions from the Q&A function on your bar. Um, your camera and your microphone are off, so the presenters do not see you. Um, please do sign up for more sessions as sessions slots are available. And this recording is available um, online at the site that you registered for um, there. Um, other than that, I am going to uh, turn it over to Jen Boucher and um, off you go. Bonjour, my name is Jen Boucher and I'm the Assistant Director of Admissions with the American University of Paris. But I'm actually based in California, so I'm much closer to you than Paris is. So if you ever have any questions, I'm your admissions counselor. AUP was founded in 1962 as an American degree located abroad. So we are that fully accredited American university and also a private and um, urban liberal arts institution. We have over 1,000 students from 100 countries. So we have students from all over the world, all different backgrounds, nationalities, and beliefs and cultures. Um, but you'll see about half of our students come from the US. At the same time, many are dual citizens, multilingual, well-traveled. So there's that international aspect to our students. 15 is the average class size and nine to one is a student to professor ratio. But along with our students being from all over the world, the faculty come from over 30 countries and 70% speak three or more languages. All classes are in English and we have that four year semester system. We have 26 majors and 39 minors. So majors like business, politics, communications, arts and humanities with an international flair. So no medical and no engineering besides computer science, but most other major areas are covered. The city of Paris is split into 20 neighborhoods called the Arrondissements, and we are located in the seventh. So you'll see the Eiffel Tower on your left, Alto de Invalide on the right, and we are those numbers one through seven right in between. We're in a beautiful area of Paris, and we're truly woven right in, where those seven buildings are in this kind of middle triangular section right there, woven right into the city. When you're walking from class to class, you'd see buildings like these with that beautiful French architecture. But we're, we're also surrounded by many museums, restaurants and cafes, businesses and departments. We have tons of clubs and activities on campus, plus sports or media, um, student government, um, no Greek life. We can always travel to Greece instead, lovely spring break trip. Um, but beyond that, one of my favorite events that we have every year is the World's Fair, which is similar to a college fair. But every table is a different country with food from their homeland, so bon appetit. We also offer study trips, and these are where students travel all over the world with their professor and classmates to experience what they're learning in the classroom in person. So some common examples are Shakespeare in London, psychology in Cairo, marketing in Iceland, or politics in Israel. We also offer cultural excursions, which are typically fun trips throughout France that range from a perfume making class in Paris to touring Normandy or Nice for the weekend. 
Housing is unique compared to most universities. So we actually have a housing office that finds and furnishes residences for our students. So these will vary in future semesters since we're making some changes due to COVID-19, but we've had apartments or resident halls or homestays in the past. And we're actually using hotels and resident halls for this fall 2020 cycle. But these areas do actually come with kitchens, so you would be able to make your own meals in your living space or you can eat out at restaurants as you please. To apply to AUP, we use the common application or you can apply to AUP directly, but that would include your two essays, your activities list, letters of recommendation and transcripts. We are test optional, always have been even before COVID-19, but the average SAT is 1265 and the average ACT is 30. We mainly use the test scores in place of placement tests for orientation, so it's neutral to your application if you don't submit the scores. The admissions office begins to read applications in mid-November, so from that point forward, you should hear an admissions response within approximately three to four weeks. These are the cost of attendance in um, euros, but in dollars, it would be approximately, give or take, based on the exchange rate, about 58,000 US dollars for the entire year. Um, so many small private liberal arts universities could be as close to $70,000 per year. So you could have a slight discount right off the bat before scholarships. These are the scholarships that we offer. The first is the Global Citizen Award, which is our Merit Scholarship. And the last two are Tuition and Scholar Awards. So you would apply for those by filling out FAFSA and the AUP aid application with the highest award covering 75% of tuition and the average award covering one third of tuition. 94% of our students have a job or are in grad school within one year of graduation. 80% report an international element to their career and 50% report that a professor personally helped them their career path. We have 20,000 alumni in 145 countries all over the world. So if you're looking for a global career, we could be an amazing starting point for you. Most students study abroad for one semester, but this is an eight semester opportunity. So that means eight times the amount of exposure to a different language, culture, currency, and country. And you also become much more independent, mature, adaptable, cross-culturally aware, and open-minded as you embark on those personal pursuits and professional endeavors. There's a barcode if you'd like more information. Merci for your time tonight, and I'll pass it off to our next presenter. Thank you, Jen. Um, our next presenter is Daniel from EHL. Daniel, off you go. Hi, good afternoon, everyone. My name is Daniel Flores, and yes, I'm here representing EHL. Uh, what you'll see is part of our 321 model. The three stands for the three locations. So on the left hand side, you see Lausanne, Switzerland, in the French speaking part. In the middle is uh, Pasug, Switzerland, in the Swiss German speaking part. And on the right is Singapore. These are the three locations that we offer our programs. Don't freak out, programs taught entirely in English, so you do not need to know the local language. We have a traditional bachelor's path, what we call our academic pathway, but we also have a professional pathway, which is really for people keen into culinary arts and that maybe eventually want to go for their bachelor's degree, which leads us to our one, which is one bachelor's degree that we offer, which is a bachelor's of science in international hospitality management. So to give a quick history about EHL, we actually started off as the world's first hotel school in 1893. Yes, I did say hotel. However, things have changed since then, and we are currently ranked as the world's number one hospitality and leisure management program. One thing I want everybody to remember is hospitality is not just hotels and restaurants. Once again, hospitality is not just hotels and restaurants. This is a service industry which is one in 10 jobs globally. So as far as our campus, incredibly diverse, over 120 different nationalities, about 84% of our students know three languages or more. And to really keep involved, we have around 30 different student committees, which are student clubs. Uh, we were also the first university to ever have a Michelin star training restaurant that happened last year. And we also were able to maintain our Michelin star this year. We also have dual accreditation. So what that means for you is if you graduate from EHL, you can work and you can continue your education worldwide. Fun fact, as you'll see in the picture, in addition to myself, this is our dress code. We wear suits every single day. It's all about prepping you for the real world. 
Now, one of the options to complete our program is to complete it in Lausanne, Switzerland, which is the rendering behind me and on your screen. Very modern, very minimalistic, and then also environmentally sustainable because that's very big with Swiss culture. We have two brand new dorms already built, or sorry, uh, three brand new dorms, and then two apartment buildings. Uh, we're working on our sports complex, so there's going to be an indoor gym, indoor pool, indoor spa. College life is rough, so people need their mani pedis, so you're going to have that on campus. But you also have your outdoor volleyball court, tennis court, and basketball court. You get the four seasons in Switzerland. Uh, in addition, you are about in three hour in a three hour flight, you're away from 36 different countries. So think about your college experience and if you want to get away. Now, this is one experience. We also have our Singapore campus. Singapore's like the Switzerland of Asia. Small, but also you have a lot of expats living there. So if you wanted to have the multicultural experience on campus and off campus, you would get that here. Another fun thing is in a three hour flight, you're in up to 17 different countries. Landscape's gonna be very different, closer to the equator, hot and humid, luscious, green, a lot of outdoor activities, and this is a foodie destination. So street food galore, and then you could have a Michelin star lunch for around 15 bucks. Yep, eat up. Now, the meat and potatoes. We offer the one bachelor's degree, which is shown right here. To make it very simple, the first six months, you're always in Lausanne, Switzerland. You're switching off courses every single week. You're doing anything from making chocolates, making pastries, drinking wine, making cocktails, to then working reception, doing inventory, doing stewarding and housekeeping. We're teaching you about service. This is not something that you read about in a book. You have to give it, create it, experience it, feel it. Six months in Lausanne, Switzerland. Immediately after that, you have your first six month internship anywhere around the world. So in your first year of college, you can be in up to two different countries. Then for three semesters, you come back. You could either do the program or finish it off in Singapore or finish it off in uh, Lausanne, Switzerland. You take three semesters of business courses, hospitality courses, and language courses. We offer German, French, Russian, Mandarin, Spanish, so you pick. Then after that, your second six month internship, same deal, anywhere around the world. You come back for your final year, you're doing advanced management theory courses, elective courses, and you actually finish the program being a consultant. You work with a company either by yourself with up to five others, you start your own business plan, or you do a research thesis and you present this to your entire graduating class. And you have at least one expert coach helping you the entire way. This is what leads 96% of our students to get a job within the first six months of graduation. And that's the highest of any school offering this program. Now, like I said, this is not just hotels and restaurants. That's what 47% of our alumni go into, but the remaining 53 go into banking, accounting, NGOs, education, healthcare, health and beauty, anything business related. This is a business school, business degree. Think of it that way. We also have over 30,000 alumni working in over 150 different countries. Now, these are only some of the companies that we have partnerships with. We have over 7,000 partnerships. And as you'll see, once again, these are not just hotels and restaurants. So if any of this looks appealing to you, hospitality may be a great option. If you hate people, don't look into hospitality. That's for sure. We are on Common App. It's a three-phase admissions process. If you have any questions, you could let me know. We do accept FAFSA. We do also have scholarships, interest-free loans, and other ways to make your tuition uh, affordable. Uh, all in, on-campus housing, meal plan, tuition fees, books, you're looking at around $50,000 per year. And then this is my contact info. So feel free to reach out to me for any questions that you have. And thanks for your time. Perfect. Thank you, Daniel. Our next, uh, our next uh, presenter is Goldsmith, University of London. And Will, you can take it away. Off you go. All right, thanks so much. Um, my name is Will Abraham and I am the International Officer for the Americas at Goldsmiths University of London. Goldsmiths is a public research institution founded in 1891 and part of University of London since 1904. The student population is just over 10,000 students with about two thirds um, being undergraduate. It's an extremely diverse student body. It's almost 30% international students coming from over 140 countries and speaking about 80 languages. We also have a, a quite sizable LGBT, LGBTQ plus population on campus, about 16% of our student body and half of our students are of color. 
we have a 15 to one student faculty ratio. So class sizes are typically quite small. We have very few lecture halls on campus and in your second and third years, most classes will be uh, under 10 uh, or 15 students. London has been voted for the past two years in a row, the best student city in the world. And our position is um, really well situated for taking full advantage of the city. So our campus is pretty self-contained. It's a little, uh, a bit American in style uh, with a campus green. Our residence halls are located on our campus or just off. And our train station, New Cross Gate, is basically right on top of our campus. And that'll take you to London Bridge in just under 10 minutes. From there, the rest of the city's at your fingertips. Um, so you can easily access your internships and work placements and take advantage of all the museums, galleries, uh, music venues, theater that London has to offer. Our academics focus mostly on the humanities, social sciences, fine and performing arts, and other popular programs that we have are our top 10 undergraduate business program in the UK, um, our computer science and psychology programs. We're also 21st in the UK for the quality and international significance of our research, and undergraduate students can take part in research from year one at one of our 50 plus research centers on campus, spanning from the Center for Postcolonial Studies to the Pinter Center for um, Creative Writing and Performance. So additionally in England, um, where London is situated, we actually have three year bachelor's degrees. So um, it will save you a little bit of money and it's a shorter, more focused degree um, with no general education requirements and you have direct entry into our programs. Here's a full listing of all of our academic departments. As you can see, they kind of range from, you know, sociology to theater and performance to history and English comparative literature and our uh, world famous art and design programs. Our entry requirements are quite straightforward. We, we require a 3.0 unweighted GPA in order to apply. Previously, we required test scores um, and we might still for current freshmen or sophomores if any happen to be in the room. Um, so I left them here, but um, we've actually moved to a test optional policy going forward um, for the next year at least. Um, so for this admission cycle, we will be taking a holistic application review. And how you apply is through UCAS, which is the University and College Application Service. This is sort of like the common app, but in the UK, and the application opens every year in early September, and the priority deadline is the 15th of January, which I highly recommend applying by. The application will cover your demographic information, academic history, and then um, a letter of recommendation is also required, and the personal statement is probably the biggest departure um, from the common application. It's definitely more focused on your academics and is actually distributed to all the universities you apply to. Um, some of our programs also will require portfolios or auditions and most require an interview as well. The total cost of attendance, including tuition, accommodation, uh, and all of your living expenses, um, visa fees, health insurance, is anywhere between 36 and 39,000 US dollars a year. We, we do offer international scholarships that you can apply for after you've been accepted to the university. Um, and we also do accept federal direct and plus loans through um, the Department of Education and Veterans Affairs funding. Our accommodation is pretty much all located on or just off our campus for undergraduate students. We have suite style living with your own room and own bathroom. Yep, that's right, your own bathroom. And you'll share a sh kitchen and uh, living space with other students. We do guarantee accommodation for first year students um, and uh, for international first year students, I should say. And after that, typically you'll move into your own flat in private accommodation for the second two years you're at Goldsmiths. We also place a pretty large emphasis on careers and your future. So you'll have support from Goldsmiths Career Service during your time at the university and then for three years after. Um, we're also opening an enterprise hub next year, which will act as a business incubator and um, will kind of foster the entrepreneurial spirit that we already have on campus because about 15% of our students will start their own business within one year of graduation. Students typically will undertake an internship in London or internationally between their second and third years uh, over the summer break.
And finally, um, we have over 120 clubs and societies you can join. So um, we highly recommend you do that. And thank you so much for, um, for your time. Perfect. Thank you, Will. Uh, next up, we have Alana from the University of East Anguilla. I hope okay. I got that right. <laughs> it is all good. We get that happening all the time. So to make it easier, you can call it UEA. Um, we are also, though, the proper name is University of East Anglia. Uh, my name is Alana Stewart. I am the regional manager in the USA and Canada. I am based in Michigan, so I work with students at all levels, um, and I am there basically right here for you if you do need anything to reach out. The University of East Anglia was founded in 1963, so we are a relatively young institution, but since our founding, we have done well at establishing ourselves and are now ranked in the world top 200 um, institutions according to Times Higher Education. We are a public campus university and we are also very research intensive. So the professors that you will study under are all doing top groundbreaking research within their fields. The university itself is part of the Norwich Research Park, which has one of the largest research outputs outside of Oxbridge in London. We offer a wide variety of subjects that I'll actually have a slide on a little bit later so if you can see um, so that you can see if we have what um, you're interested in. We have undergraduate and postgraduate degrees. And we're just on the start of a large size university. Um, and of that student population of about 17,000, we have 17% 17 international students from about 100 different countries. While you may not heard of UEA before, we have an awesome location and we constantly talk about this as one of our top selling points because it is such a friendly place to live. And it's kind of one of those quintessential British um, cities that you may be looking um, to travel to. It's about an hour and a half northeast of London by train where you see that pink little star on the east side of London on that map and about 30 minutes of a train ride to the coastline. So if you like to go to the beach, it is not too far away from you. Um, and so you have that opportunity to do so. Um, we do have an international airport, so you can fly directly into Norwich. Typically, students will bypass the UK and go over to Amsterdam and then fly backwards into Norwich itself. Um, but that also means you have the opportunity to be on the doorstep of the European continent. Now, the city itself has that nice juxtaposition of the old with the new. We have over 30 medieval churches. We also have a castle that you can see in that third picture from the top. Um, we have two cathedrals, but we also have modern facilities. There are about three or four malls within five minutes walking within that city center. So there's top it's a top shopping destination. We're also named a very vegan friendly um, city. And then we also um, were noted as one of the top 10 UK cities to live in. So even though a relatively small city, we still have everything that a student might want and would like to have as a student um, within the city. Now, our campus itself is about three miles from this proper city center, about a 20 to 25 minute bus ride. We're located on 320 acres of kind of parkland. So you can see there's a lot of green, spot, a green space our students take advantage of, including a lake um, and there are grills out there that you can rent and have a barbecue out with your friends. We also have that student union, which features pubs and a live music venue. In any proper year, we would have 60 or more live music gigs on campus. Our library is always open. We also have a sports park, which is the largest indoor sports park in Great Britain. So if you want to stay fit and stay active or participate in a sports club, you have the opportunity to do so. And then finally, featuring kind of in that top left corner, we do have the Sainsbury Center for Visual Arts. Now, again, you may not have heard of UEA before today, but we are actually featured in the Avengers films. And that Sainsbury Center for Visual Arts doubles as the Avengers headquarters in some of the more recent films. Um, so even though, you, again, you may not have heard of us, you've actually seen us. We do have accommodation on campus. It is single space, mostly for our students. So you can opt to live on campus and then live off your second year. The other thing to mention is we do have career services that will help to get you situated. Um, maybe if you want to take advantage of the post-study work visa that the UK will be offering. Um, we also have wellness services. So if you do need any support, whether that be just as an international student with your visa or in terms of mental health or, or mental health, or also if you do have any um, services that you need in terms of a learning difference, we can also assist with that on our campus. 
these are the four faculties that we have. So these main kind of subject areas um, and under these we have a wide array of bachelor's degree programs. So we have over 160 majors or what we would call programs in the UK. Two to highlight here are creative writing and environmental science. Those are the two programs that UEA is most well known for, but we do also rank well within business, economics, international development, as well as medicine. Um, like Will mentioned, because we are both in England, we do have the three-year degree program um, with the option to do a fourth year um, if you would like to choose one of our programs that involves a year abroad, a year in industry, or a placement year. Um, and a lot of our programs that you'll see will have the option to do one of those years. Um, the nice thing about that is if you opt to do the fourth year, the cost of that fourth year, um, which is actually takes place during your third year of study, but that doesn't cost the full the full degree of or the full amount of tuition and fees. It would be a reduced cost of about a third or a quarter. So even though it is extending to a fourth year, you're still going to end up looking pretty good within your finances. Again, like Goldsmiths, we are located on the UCAS application, and thank you so much, Will, for covering a little bit about that for me. Um, so we hope we can be one of your five options. Um, our requirements are a 3.3 plus GPA and three AP or IB exams. We are looking over it at the moment, um, but we, these are the typical courses, uh, course requirements that we would have. We do have generous scholarships that cover up to 25% and potentially even more. You're allowed to work on your student visa, and also you can bring over FAFSA loans. Our costs start at about 22,000 US dollars, and the cost of living outside of London for the entire UK is about 12,000 for the nine months when you're on campus. Finally, connecting with us, please do dial into our social media um, on one of these channels. You probably have a preferred one, and we have some awesome YouTube videos. And then if you do need to connect with me at any point, you can reach out to me directly um, with my email right there, or you can also WhatsApp or text me directly or call me on that phone number that is listed. Thank you so much. Thank you, Alana. Um, we are going to move to University of London and Annabelle. Um, off you go. Great, thank you. Wonderful, hello all. Um, I am representing the University of East London and I'm currently based in London at the moment. So it's, um, it's much later in the day than it is over there, but it's, um, it's fantastic to be talking with you all today. Um, so I'll dive straight in because we're on a time constraint. So I just wanted to start off by um, reiterating we're based in London. Um, we're one of the most diverse multicultural cities in the world. And I just wanted to showcase this picture. Um, there is a saying that says, when you're bored of London, you're bored of life. And it is one of those cities where you can just um, get everything on your doorstep. It's diverse, it's exciting, it's a great place to work, it's a great place to study. Um, and that's why year upon year, we have more US students coming and joining us. So it's a really great place to be. So a little bit about the University of East London. We started off as a polytechnic college in 1892. We then became, um, we gained university status in 1992. So we're, we're a very modern university, which really serves as well because that means we have modern facilities and we're able to kind of roll with the times and really serve our students well. Our student population is 17,000 students in total, including distance learning students, and our international student population is around 20%. We offer a wide variety of subjects and we have six schools spanning education, business and law, health, sport and bioscience, art and creative industries and architecture and computing as well as psychology. In terms of um, how the University of East London compares to the United States, I know a lot of you might be wondering, well, how does it measure up? So in terms of our application, it would be a free application um, if you apply via the Common App or via our website. We offer rolling admissions, so that means you receive an answer within two to four weeks, and we have a deadline as late as the July 2021 for a September 2021 intake. Um, so you do have a longer length of time to apply, but like the other universities have mentioned, it is advisable to apply earlier rather than later. 
our degrees are three years. And as mentioned before, the reason is because um, in the UK, we don't include general education. So it is much more specialized of a degree. And that is why it's a shorter time frame. Tuition is around $17,000. So in comparison to a lot of US schools, it's incredibly cost effective. Um, and your tuition for your entire degree could come out to around $51,000. In terms of entry requirements, you're looking at around a 3.0 GPA, and we ask for one of the following in addition. So it's either a 1070 on the SAT, a 23 on the ACT, or three AP scores of three and above. If you are applying for an art-based subject, uh, such as performing arts, you might be asked to do an audition. You might also be asked to do an interview if you're doing any kind of governmental subjects, such as um, education or social work. Um, as mentioned earlier, um, the UK is very lucky to have um, you get your own room. So that is something that's quite common across the UK. Um, what's not necessarily as common, or sometimes it depends uh, on the university, is whether you get your own private bathroom and shower room. So at UEL, you get your own room and you get your own ensuite bathroom. So every student gets that. Um, we don't do shared rooms and there's not the option to not have your own bathroom. So every single room offers that. Um, you do share a kitchen, but that is between three to five students, depending on which halls you are living in. And that comes to around $7,500 per year. Meal plans are not compulsory, but you can opt for it, but it would cost a little bit extra. So in terms of sports at the University of East London, we were really lucky to host the 2012 um, sorry, the Team USA during the 2012 Olympics. And that's really created a legacy for sports at the University of East London. So we're consistently ranked in the top three uh, across London universities. And um, we also offer sports scholarships. So if you're a keen soccer player or volleyball player or basketball player, um, definitely pop a question in or contact us because we do offer sports scholarships and we're really keen to continue that sports legacy for the University of East London. Um, in terms of travel, the UK is well known for its excellent transportation system, but London especially uh, reigns supreme with its transport. Uh, like New York, you can dive around anywhere using um, our equivalent to the subway, which is called the Tube. You'll also um, have seen them if you've been to London or you've watched films of London, those famous red double-decker buses, and those run 24-7, so you can get anywhere at any time of the day. As a student, you would also get discounted travel, uh, which means that you'd be paying um, quite considerably less than other people. Um, and London also has five airports on its doorstep, which means that traveling to Europe is really easy and you literally have Europe on, its doorstep, on your doorstep. So just to reiterate, the benefits of studying in East London means that you complete your bachelor's degree in three years instead of four years, general education, is not required, so you never have to take English or maths again. We accept federal student loans, and you can get free textbooks for the entire degree. I know we're in a time constraint, so I'm just gonna skip ahead a little bit. How you can apply via the Common App, directly via our website or via UCAS. If you want to know more, you can email us at americasuel.ac.uk, or you can follow our Instagram, follow me to East London. It's been great speaking to you today. Thank you very much. Thank you, Annabelle. Um, last up is Megan from London Metropolitan University. Megan, off you go. Okay. Just a moment here. Okay, hello everyone. I, I guess I am wrapping up the session tonight. Thank you so much for having me. I am speaking to you from London Metropolitan University or London Met, and I guess that I have the benefit of following three of my awesome colleagues from other UK universities. Um, so we're all based in England, and so a lot of the things that each one of them spoke about really is relevant to all of our schools. So the three-year bachelor's degrees, um, 
applying through the UCAS system. It's like the common app in the UK where you can apply to five um, programs or universities at the same time. And the UK government also has a post-study work visa where international students have the opportunity to stay and work for two years. So I just kind of wanted to say thank you to them. And if you're interested in the UK or England in general and you take down one of our contacts, we're happy to connect you. You know, if our school doesn't have a program or maybe isn't the fit you're looking for. And remember, obviously, the great options we heard about from Paris and Switzerland earlier on as well. So with further ado, let me move forward. And then uh, since I'm the last one, make sure you type some questions into the chat box and the other universities can always answer um, some questions while I'm speaking. So my name again is Megan Godding and I am the International Officer for London Met in North America. And I happen to be based right here in Colorado with the rest of you. So that's just by chance. And in a normal year, um, all of us representatives are normally traveling around the United States meeting students and going to your schools and college fairs. But um, so in other circumstances, I might have met you in person right now, but I guess virtual will have to do. Please jot down my contact details and um, I'd be very happy to be in touch with you if you have questions after this session. But just a little bit about me as I did grow up on the East Coast and I was then an international student in London myself and lived there for about seven years. So I love working with Americans on going over to the UK, um, living in London or other parts of the UK or going to other international universities. So please do get in touch because I think it's just such an incredible experience for anybody coming from the United States to get to have. And I would like all of you to have the opportunity as well. It's not as culturally common sometimes for your peers at US high schools to be applying to international universities, but it's really becoming more and more common and um, really beneficial for your resumes um, to apply to US grad schools, come back and work here, or potentially have global work opportunities as well. So as a quick overview to London Met, our institutional uh, roots really date back to 1848, but we're a fairly new institution in that in 2002, we merged uh, the London Guildhall University and the University of North London into what is now London Metropolitan University. And so we have two campuses in the heart of central London, so very near kind of the sights and sounds that you're familiar with when you think of, of London. Um, like the shows and the bridges, like the big blue bridge, Tower Bridge, you can walk to um, from our campus at Allgate, which is our arts campus. And we have about 10,000 students, about 7,500 of them are undergraduate students. And we represent 147 nationalities within our student body and our staff and faculty. So we, um, like a lot of the other schools that I've spoken tonight, are really proud of our diversity, um, very inclusive, very welcoming environment. And over 65% of our students come from a minority background, underrepresented background. Um, we've got a lot of first generation students. So there's really a place for everybody at London Met. Um, one of our alumni that we're really proud of is actually the current mayor of London, Sadiq Khan, and he's really a um, strong proponent of students coming from all over the world to study in London. It's always ranked as top C um, to be a student in the world. There's, like I said, a place for everyone, but sometimes, you know, if the big metropolis isn't for you, you can get in touch because there's awesome options in smaller cities or um, rural campuses throughout the UK. Um, you heard from the University of East Anglia earlier, and they're also um, a great option depending on what you're looking for. So um, our campus is very much big buildings, and you'd be taking the tube, which is the underground, and um, going on the double-decker red buses, so really having a, a big city experience, which is really invigorating. Um, here's just a snapshot from uh, the top of our Holloway Road campus, which is in kind of North London, and you can see all the way down to the river, although you can't see the water there, um, the Thames River, and get the full kind of skyline of London. And so you can see there's a lot of green spaces that you can take advantage of. So even if you're living in the middle of the major city, you can always escape. Um, we're very near uh, my favorite green space in London, which is called Hampstead Heath, and I would just go get lost and explore there. Anybody interested in kind of a literary background that's where a lot of the writers like Byron and Keats used to gather so always a lot of history surrounding you. Um, quick overview of our two campuses so Holloway Road um, students often are really excited because our building is located next to Emirates Stadium which is the home of Arsenal Football Club if you're a Premier League uh, football or soccer fan and um, our Holloway Road campus 
I like to think of as our um, kind of business, computing, and sciences. We have one of the largest teaching labs in all of Europe in our Holloway Road campus. That is called our London Met Super Lab, which you can see um, pictured there. And we also have our student gym libraries and a lot of really neat hangout spaces. Um, our student union area is called the Rocket. And so it's a really um, a great environment to make friends and socialize, join clubs and societies, sports teams. And you can see a lot of our programs that are offered on that campus, um, business, international um, marketing, computing, film, a lot in the sciences, and then also the social sciences. We've got some great programs in international relations, psychology, and criminology. And then our arts campus is at Algate, and so that's really our creative hub of art, architecture, and design. We have programs in fashion, photography, uh, creative writing, and English, and jewelry and textiles. So um, they're both located pretty near one another and we'll advise you on how you can connect and use the facilities on both campuses. And I'm sorry, I think that wraps me up there, but please do get in touch if you're interested in learning more about London Met. Okay, perfect. Thank you everyone for joining us tonight uh, uh, for this session. Um, when you close this window, there will be a link and uh, we ask you to uh, complete the very short survey that we're asking of you. And um, just a reminder, please sign up for more sessions. In about a week, you will see this session, uh, the recording of it, on the website that you registered for. Again, thank you to our six universities for presenting tonight, and um, have a great night. Thank you so much. Bye-bye.